everybody. Welcome to the Decatur Public Library Summer Reading Program. This year's theme is Tales in Tales. My name is Anna Mulliken and I am the archaeologist at the Oakville Indian Mounds Museum. We are a free and public museum and recreation park owned by the Lawrence County School System. We are the home of our Indian Education Program. So today's program perfectly fits in with the summer reading program theme, Tales and Tales. So we're going to talk a little bit about Native American tales, myths and legends and stories. And we're also going to talk a little bit about actual animal tales and it all fits together really well. If you are interested in learning more about Native American history, I have a few ideas and suggestions for you this summer. First of all, the best way that you can learn more about Native American history and prehistory in Alabama is to visit one of our many wonderful museums and parks that are dedicated to Native American monuments. So not only do we have the Oakville Indian Mounds in our area, and we're located in Lawrence County right past Moulton, but we also have the Florence Indian Mound and Museum. And um, you can also visit other museums in Alabama, like Moundville Archaeological Park and Fort Toulouse. And there's a lot of other wonderful sites. If you go to the Alabama Indigenous Mound Trails website, you can find all of the different locations in Alabama where you can go to these wonderful history museums and learn more about Native American history. The second best way to learn more about Native American history is to visit your local public library. And today, all behind me, I have lots of wonderful Native American books that you can find here at the Decatur Public Library that are all Native American themed. We have everything from the Popcorn Book by Tommy DePaola. We have several Paul Goebel books that are, have wonderful illustrations in them. We also have Mama, Do You Love Me? that is a um, Eskimo Alaskan themed book. We also have some newer books that they've gotten in this year. This is one of our favorite books and this is called We Are Water Protectors written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. And this is this year's 2021 Caldecott Honors winner. So this is a wonderfully illustrated book. We also have Fry Bread. It's a really great book that talks about the fry bread food and how it brings families together. And we also have um, some wonderful books about dogs and horses and different legends. So one of my favorite legends that the Decatur Public Library has this book is called The Legend of the Blue Bonnet. In this book, the library has this sweet little doll that goes along with the book and um, a really neat activity that you can do at home to go along with, with this book is you can actually go online and you can purchase blue bonnet seeds for yourself and you can plant them in your garden. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do crafts and activities at home to go along with a lot of the books that we have. Of course, with the popcorn book, you can pop a big bowl of popcorn or you can go out and you can draw corn growing in a local field around your house. There's a lot of other things you can do with um, corn. You can make lots of activities out of cornmeal. You can actually glue cornmeal onto a black sheet of paper and it, once the glue dries, it looks like it forms the patterns of the Milky Way and looks like the stars in the sky. There are also several games that Native Americans used to play in Alabama. One of the games that they used to play is called Chunky. And Chunky was a great game that involved having a round stone that almost looks like a biscuit. And they would roll this stone on the ground and they would have darts that they would throw at the stone. And this would be a big community game that the whole village would be involved with. And they would place bets on whose side that they thought would win. And um, these stones were so highly polished and shaped perfectly to roll that oftentimes villages only had one stone that everyone owned and took care of together. Another really popular um, game that Native Americans have played for thousands of years is stickball. And you might know it at your schools as lacrosse because it is still played today. 
And here is a set of wooden hickory stick ball sticks with a small leather hide ball. And they would use the sticks to capture the ball and throw it to their opponents. And it was a really, really fun game that could have as little as eight people on a team or as many as hundreds of different people on, on a team. So they had lots of different games that, that they could play. And that's a great way for you to learn more about Native American history too. You can play lacrosse in your yard and with local friends of yours. Let's talk a little bit about Southern Indian myths and legends. Now we all like to be creative and we all like to write stories. A myth is something that is so fantastical that is, that is made up. But often a myth is used to explain something that happens in nature. Something that is really a fun way to explain something in nature but may not be based in actual scientific fact. A legend is a story that you create that does have some small bit of truth in it somewhere that it may be related to a historical event that happened in the past or it may involve somebody famous that lived in the past. So we have stories, myths, and legends. A lot of Native American legends from the South involve different animals and different good deeds that animals did. And I'm going to read you one really short legend today that involves a spider. So this story is called the Water Spider's Tusty Bowl. Now, this is a Cherokee legend. In the beginning, there was no fire and the world was cold. Then the thunders who lived up in Galanladi sent their lightning and put fire in the bottom of a hollow sycamore tree on the island. The animals knew fire was there because they could see the smoke coming out of the top of the tree, but they could not get to it because of all of the water. They held a council to decide what to do. Every animal that could fly or swim was eager to go after the fire. Raven offered, and because he was so large and strong, the animals thought he could surely do the work. So he was sent first. He flew high and far across the water and alighted on a sycamore tree. But while he was wondering what to do next, the heat scorched his feathers black. He was frightened and came back without the fire. Little Screech Owl volunteered to go. He reached the trees safely but while he was looking down into the hollow tree, a blast of hot air came up and nearly burned his eyes. But he managed to fly home. It was a long time before he could see well. His eyes were very red to this day. Then the hooting owl and the horned owl went. By the time they got to the hollow tree, the fire was burning so fiercely that the smoke nearly blinded them and the ashes carried up the wind and made white rings about their eyes. They had to come home without the fire. With all their rubbing, they were not able to get rid of the white rings. No more birds would venture to the burning tree, but the little snake, Black Racer, said he would go and bring back the fire. He swam across the island and crawled through the grass to the tree, which he entered through a very small hole. The heat and the smoke were too much for him though, and after dodging about, he managed to get out of the hole. But his body got scorched, and he was trying to double back. After Black Racer came back, the, black, the great snake Black Climber offered to go get the fire. He swam over the island and climbed up a tree, as the climber always does. But when he put his head down the hole, the smoke, <coughs> made him choke. So then he went back and it was the color of black, just as Black Racer. The animals held another council, for there was still no fire and the world was still very cold. The birds, the snakes, and the four-footed animals all had an excuse for not going to the island because they were afraid to venture near that burning sycamore. At last, 
Water Spider said she would go. Water Spider had black downy hair and red stripes all over her body. She could run on top of the water. And so she could then dive down to the bottom. But the question is, how would she actually bring the fire back to everybody? Well, I'll manage that, said the water spider. She spun a fine thread from her body and wove it into a testy bowl, which she fastened on her back. Then she crossed over to the island and moved through the grass to the burning tree. Water Spider put one little coal of fire into her bowl, and she came back with it to the animals. Ever since, we have all had fire, and Water Spider still keeps her testy bowl. So one activity that you could do to go along with that myth is you can get some air dry clay, and you can make small pieces of pottery. So at the Oakville Indian Mounds, we do have pottery classes from time to time, where we actually have clay that we dry and fire in our kilns, but we also make uh, pottery out of air dry clay as well. So you can go get some air dry clay and make a small bowl like this. So, let me talk to you a little bit about some of the animal hides that I have here on the table today. So Native Americans not only hunted animals for food, but they also used the animal hides for their clothing, for bedding, and they would even use things like their bones and antlers and even sinew to use in their, their tools and to use um, the sinew to sew different clothing together. So not only did they use animal hides for clothing, but Native Americans also were very skilled in Alabama at weaving very beautiful twined and loose fabrics. So let's talk about a few of the animals I have on my table. We all know what this is. This is a skunk, but this one, he smells pretty good because he's been cleaned. And look how beautiful the skunk stripes actually are. We think of them as just being stinky animals, but truly skunks are very beautiful creatures. Another animal that I have on my table, and uh, there are lots of Native American myths about this guy, but this guy is a possum. I think one of the myths is how possum lost his tail that you can look up at home. But possums, um, they're, they don't have very um, soft fur, um, and possums are actually a great animal for you to have around your house. They eat ticks, and we all know that we need as much help as possible to get rid of ticks near our houses. So if you ever see a possum, just let him go on his way. This animal, I know you recognize, this is a red fox. So in Alabama, we have two different kinds of foxes. We have red foxes like this one, but we also have gray foxes. And fox fur is very soft and, and very beautiful. And then since we're talking about tails and tails, look how beautiful his tail is. Another animal I have on my table, I'm sure you can recognize him by his tail. All the rings going down his tail. This is a raccoon, of course. And I know that we think of raccoon fur and tails being used in frontier style caps for men. Also have a giant coyote skin, kind of looks like a wolf skin. And um, this would have been great camouflage to wear, to blend in with your environment while you were hunting. And I know that we know of coyote as being a trickster. And there's several different myths and legends in, in the books behind me that talk about the trickster coyote. And then I have one last animal fur to show you, and he is my little soft mink. We do have a few mink. We also have muskrats in Alabama, and he is very, 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 very soft. And I will um, end with him with a very silly joke for you today. So what do you call a mink with only one eyeball? A wink! One thing I want to make sure that I tell you about is a very interesting educational exhibit that will be coming to the Oakville Indian Mounds. 
For the month of July and the first two weeks of August, we will be receiving a traveling exhibit from the Smithsonian. This exhibit is called Main Street's Waterways, and it will be an interactive exhibit that has lots of display panels that children can touch and learn about. There will be a scavenger hunt, and it, the whole exhibit goes through water, everything from the scientific nature of water to how we use water today in Alabama, how we collect a canoe, how our water systems work, and we'll also learn a lot about the Tennessee River and waterfalls in our area. Populations in Alabama, especially Native Americans, have always chosen where to live because of the water that we have in our state. They needed to be near great drinking water sources and also water that they could use for fishing and water that they could use uh, to canoe so that they could um, have trade routes and, and, and go different places. So we're really excited to host this um, Smithsonian Waterways exhibit. We'll also be having our youth fishing rodeo sometime in July. To look for those dates, please go to our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Oakville Indian Mounds. We also have our website at oakvilleindianmounds.com. Thank you for joining us today.